I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susi. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city on earth. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. And I'm JT Timmons. And today we are going to be talking about the Tanzanian Popobawa. Popobawa! Oh God. I've been singing it all morning. I am telling you guys, <laughs> exile. Exile? Why are you going to exile me from every <laughs> single episode? We're going to make it a Damn. Patreon um, poll. We're going to be like, should we, <laughs> should we exile Our JT? Patri- I, would like, I would like you to know, <laughs> if you are a patron listening, that um, I would say 90% of the posts, oh, those fun, fun posts, come are from me. me. Oh. <laughs> I'm done. No, they are from me. I work hard maintaining our patreon so our patrons before you vote on that horrendous poll that i did not create <laughs> it's the jt which mm-hmm. trials. speaking of which i'd like to thank some new patrons welcome to the para junkies team poober allison f fanny garcia and yes that is our uh that is the name for our fan base the para junkies we are para junkies hashtag ghost, ghost heroin, heroin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Thank gosh. you, Chris, for that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. anyways. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so let's go ahead and dive into the Popobawa. Popobawa. Um, now, the uh, Popobawa is an evil creature that stalks the Tanzanian island of Pimba in Ooh. the Indian Ocean. Popobawa means batwing in Swahili. And so uh, it can change shape a bat sometimes, a human form like at other times. It prefers to come out at night, but some say that they have seen it during the day. Okay, so it's, a, it's, like, it's like Bat Boy of, uh, like, it's like the uh, African version of Bat Boy? Mm, I would actually, com- I, I would compare it more so to the Gullah Geechee Hag over okay. the Bat Boy, because Bat Boy doesn't necessarily do the same things that Popobawa does. Okay. Uh, Bat Boy kind of stays in his cavern, um, but this guy, this this creature, you'll see. Okay. It, okay. It's, it's intense. Um, but yes. I thought it was in a cavern. No. Oh. Oh, no. okay. No, it so, just looks like a bat. Oh, I, I, you, so you said it's intense, so... Exile. Exile. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. So believers say. Our listeners are like, oh my God, why do I even listen to this? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but yes, so believers in the creature say that it is a jinn uh, released by oh. a, a sheik seeking revenge. Now, Ooh. that is some people's beliefs. Other people believe that it is a creature um, that is just brought to earth that's almost like a demon of sorts that's just solely there for mayhem okay of sorts um but according to the believers the popobawa will creep into your room in the dark of night and oh, attack this does you sound like a hag. in your bed sometimes a sulfurous smell accompanies the creature and occasionally it is heard on the roof claw scraping before it enters it's okay. very similar to the hag that is extremely similar to even the though hag. the hag um, is from West Africa, so it's interesting. Yeah, and that well, the this is the Gullah Geechee yeah. people, I should say, are descendants of West African slaves. Um, so a lot of their traditions come from that region of Africa. So it is interesting that it's a very similar creature, but they come from different. But they're so, so far away from yeah. each other. Yeah, wow. And so it, it we'll we'll get into that theory a little bit later because there have been accounts of the Popobawa in other countries too. Ooh, okay, so, okay. You know, I love, love, love the idea of the Popobawa, like you said, on on, on someone's roof, roof yeah. scratching. Yeah, with its claws. Oh my god, that reminds me of, and uh, everyone's heard this, but but Krampus? the oh well, 
Ow. Well, because Krampus walks on I, people's face like know, that. But. but that's not what I'm going to say. I, I was going to say that the horror story, super famous, the um, of the of the the man with the hook. And yes. And there's a, yeah. a, a gajillion um, uh, variations of it. But my uncle, when I was like three or four, I call my uncle Onion. But but my Cause onion. Because he's real country. I'm real country. I'm a high onion. Uh, but onion. When I was like three or four, uh, like we'd be just driving, and you know, um, uh, maybe because I remember being in the car seat. So whatever's not car seat age, but really really young. Uh, and and he would tell me about um, the the story, the the hook hand, and then uh, the the woman at the end gets out of the car and sees her boyfriend hanging from a uh from a tree above the car where the car stalled out and his and his nails are scraping the top of the car and that reminds me of that and i feel like that has always freaked me that was like the the genesis of me being freaked out about things scratching the things above me <laughs> i don't know but scratching um, your roof <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I wish I told that story better, but it's just such a long story that like th- I just had to focus in on that one thing because that's not what this episode's about. It's about the poo poo poo. But um, but yeah, <laughs> but it it is um that is a freaky attribute. But honestly, what the creature does is scarier in my opinion than how it looks and how it sounds. Mm. Um, so what it does is it tends to sexually assault and sodomize men, um, but it can attack women as well. Yeah, that okay, was the this, twist that you didn't expect, was it? This went, this <laughs> went from you know this like really cool creature, uh, you know it, like bat wings and scratching the the roof, and it's like oh my gosh, the hag, which does not do that, and no, all not. of that, and then it just literally took a massive downhill to being demonetized. And I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, so, what? Um, yeah, that is. <laughs> No, we won't get demonetized. I know, that, but no, no, no. I, I, I was just, it was just a joke. But, oh yeah, but yeah. It was. Um, that's the wow. That mm-hmm. is. Uh, that is. Yikes! Just a part of what it does. Um, now, oh boy. Yeah, it is. That's why I say it is scarier for that. Um, yeah, than, that's like that's full blown sexual assault. Goodness oh gracious. yeah, by a demon. Um, so yeah, is that the sulfur smell? Yeah. So sulfur, uh, the reason why I believe it's more of a demonic entity is a lot of times, uh, you know, sulfur is associated with demons because they believe like in the old, old, like, um, you know, writings about demons and stuff. It was always that when a demon crossed over hell smelled like sulfur apparently. And so you would get a, a poof of sulfur smell because they cut through from hell. Okay. Um, so that was kind of where the association with sulfur um, with demons really came about, but it is a very common attribute when they are present that you smell the rotting flesh or the sulfur sure. or things of that nature. Goodness gracious. So yeah. Um, so the Popobawa is actually a rather new um, story for folklore and whatnot because it really started in the 70s. Okay. Um, it kind of start, one of the earliest accounts that I heard of was um, in 1971, a little girl from Pimba had been believed to be possessed by a Popobawa. Oh. And they said that she would deliver the demon's commands with a deep, unnatural voice, and it would be accompanied by rattling sounds from nearby rooftops. Goodness. That's the earliest account. Um, so, so there's multiple. Yes. There's not just one Popobawa. Oh, no. No, there's... Now I don't want to sing its name anymore after hearing what it does to Yeah. People. Uh, I know. Well, it's interesting too because it attacks. Such a fun name. It attacks men, which is very uncommon. I find it's you know yeah. usually it's a lot of times it's a, it things attack women or whatever it is, but this one is, seeks actively seeks for men. Goodness um, gracious! And so the uh, the thing with the Popobawa is that it kind of comes in waves of. Um, attacks so it'll seem like there's like a high spike in different attacks and then it recedes for a little bit and it goes away for a little bit and then it comes back yeah um so one of the more recent uh situations of this happening was in 1997 um a man named majaka hamad he thought that he was attacked um by 
a Popobawa. So he was a farmer. He did not believe in ghosts or demons or anything, but his direct quote said um, that he could feel it and something was pressing, or he said, I could feel it, something was pressing on me. I couldn't imagine what sort of thing was happening to me. You feel as if you were screaming with no voice. It was just like a dream, but then um, I was thinking it was this Popobawa and he had come to do something terrible to me, something sexual. I don't believe in spirits, so maybe that's why it attacked me. Maybe it will attack anyone who doesn't believe. Be- and the reason why he says this is because people have reported that basically um, the Popobawa will speak to them of sorts. So basically, where is it in my notes? So the the Popo Bawa like w- speaks to them before the attacks. So or basically, like oh here warning? it is. Okay, so after it attacks them, basically um, it would tell people if they didn't tell others what happened, it would attack them again. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's mm-hmm. yeah. That that sounds like it wants its name being spread and said. Yes, and it wants to, it wants to be known. Yeah, that's wild. Um, that's. And is I, that demonic? Yeah. Like, I feel like demons are always like... Well, there's demons for different things. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, now, you see, there have... Uh, when reports of attacks happen, it really sends the locals into panic. Um, especially in the 90s no to doubt. the early 2000s. Uh, basically, there was a series of nighttime sexual assaults that were blamed on Popobawas. Why were they blamed on Popo Bawa? Well, you see, doctors all over the island were treating people from alleged Popo Bawa attacks where they had broken ribs and large bruises on them. That they, they didn't think that that was just possibly a serial rapist? No, they believed it was Popo Bawa. They said, like, they would go to the doctor and say that it was Popo Bawa that attacked me. Really? Yes. So, like, so, like... They saw their assailant, and it was, yes. uh, and it was it a was creature a with wings. Oh, my God. Um, the most consistent thing that has come about is that everybody says that it has bat-like wings, it has a foul odor coming from it, and it puffs with smoke. Um, okay. Some people were trying to say that it was a ghost, or it was a dwarf, cyclops, or ogre. Most people believe it's a demon. Um, but, yes. Now, you see, even the BBC reported on this. Um, in 2007. Yeah. And because they were... Report- BBC reported The BBC it? reported wow. about the Popobawa. Um, because there were people, whole families, that were trying to protect themselves against the Popobawa because the 90s to the early 2000s, like up into 2007, they, that was like the height of the Popobawa. Um, okay. And so basically... Uh, what the BBC said was some men are staying awake or sleeping in groups outside their homes. Others are smearing themselves with pig's oil, believing this repels attacks. I also read that... Pig's oil? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And I also read that there were um, whole families that were sleeping outside together with their arms linked around a fire to try to ward off the creature. Because Whoa. people were so afraid Goodness. of this creature. Um, now, and it, and it only attacks men. Like there, there's it can like, attack women, but it is very uncommon. Okay, is what it seems. So, like, it's mainly families trying to protect their men. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, now, outbreaks uh, also started occurring from islands um, outside of Zanzibar, all the way to Dar es Salaam, and like okay. all that. Um, and more and more people were reporting having popobawas. So, uh, basically, and this is, this is a, something for right now, at least, um, uh, you know, all the way up to where we are in this, in the story, uh, this is something that is isolated to the Zanzibar area yes. and, and then, you know, uh, like outer, outer, uh, Tanzania, like Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah. Yeah. So but, no other country. Well, okay. So here's the thing is there have been some reports that people, um, think the monkey man in India is the Popobawa. Oh, I don't know so, about the monkey man. You, we'll go into him in another episode. Okay. But yeah, so like some people believe that there was um, 
like sightings in India and things yeah. like that. But it seems to be the majority of it happens in Tanzania. Um, but yes, so there um, were pretty much just sightings that were happening in these massive waves. People still think that they are being attacked by Popobawas to this very day. Wow. Um, and so people think because there's been a rise in sleep paralysis that that is the Popobawa coming back, essentially, because it died off for a period of time. Um, and so people believe, because a lot of people are starting to come out now, is saying that they've experienced sleep paralysis and that it's this horrible thing, but they believe that it's the Popobawa. This, like, makes me think, like, so... For all of you that don't know, we uh, we own a uh, theater called the Savannah Underground, um, and uh, it's kind of like part of our the Savannah Underground brand mm-hmm. with that you know like with our podcast and all of that. But um, in that in the show, it's like an immersive theater. Uh, in the show, there is uh, like in the, the the second story is about the hag, which mm-hmm. she mentioned is a uh, Gullah Geechee uh, tale, and um, the Gullah Geechee culture is really really um, uh, prevalent uh, around Savannah, Charleston, all the way down to Jacksonville, all the way up to uh, North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, and um, you know it's just a, the, us telling that story is kind of a way to keep the the culture um like keep people googling the Gullah Geechee people and all of that uh even talk about it now maybe you're googling the Gullah Geechee people uh it's really 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 wicked culture um really cool but you know they have the hag and that's that's the story that we tell in the theater and it makes me think like i wonder if different cultures around the world have their own hag Mm-hmm. Because this, yes, it's very similar to the hag is that it comes at night and it comes and gets you. Um, but the, the Gullah Geechee hag does not have anything to do with sexual assault at all, not sexual in any nature. And it is mainly, it is mainly to zap you of your energy. And it, it is what the Gullah Geechee people um, and, and me believe, uh, and you, I think you believe yeah. this, oh, I believe uh, it. that, that it comes, it's your, it's the answer for sleep paralysis. Like basically when you're, when you are paralyzed, you wake up and you're in that in between of, of awake and asleep and you can't move. And then you see the hag in the corner of the room and she comes at you and then she rides you. She literally gets on you. That's not like a, 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 a sexual thing, but, um, she gets on you and then literally sucks the energy energy that you just earned by sleeping um and then and then you know this is this is somewhat similar to that but also very different in the way of the actual physical attack so that makes me think like how many other cultures around the world you know even if they're just like um small like micro cultures on you know um in different areas of the world how many of them have their own hag i wonder if there's multiple types of hags around so here's the thing is I've actually um, thought about this quite a bit because I've noticed um, since we talked about the hag, a lot of people go into our comment section, especially on TikTok, yeah. people talking about sleep paralysis. And it's a variety of different people because we used to have this theory that um, a lot of our um, people who work at the Savannah Underground have kind of thought about is like, well, maybe if you have like Gullah Geechee blood or if you mm-hmm. have are a descendant from Africa or somebody from Africa, maybe you're more susceptible to the hag or maybe you're more, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, susceptible to sleep paralysis. But I've noticed there's a lot of ethnicities that um, have started popping up in our TikTok comments about having sleep paralysis in a lot of different religions and a lot of different cultures. Yeah. So it does aid to that uh, theory that you're talking about because I've started thinking about that too, where I'm like, maybe these hags or these popobawas are demons of sorts, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, but they present themselves in a way that fits your culture and a certain belief system, which is very possible because there are different demons for different situations. There's different demons that reside with different um, faith systems, different belief systems, and don't necessarily abide by the same rules. Sure. So because I've seen, you know, some people 
talk about in the comment section where they're like, the only thing that helps is when I proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. I know your brother, Kiwan, yep. he, he said that personally, yep. but Kiwan, um, you know, practices Christianity. So maybe his sleep paralysis. Yeah, and he's a descendant from West Africa too. Yes, exactly. Well, that was kind of where the theory started was um, we started thinking about, well, like maybe Kiwan, you yeah. know, because maybe he has some gullet because he's very entrenched um, no, he um, definitely does. In Savannah yeah, yeah, with yeah. his family. So. No, there's definitely some in there. But yeah, so, but regardless, you know, maybe there are Christian demons and then there are, you know, um, different demons. Yeah, that, maybe it's by your belief system. Yeah. You know. And maybe that's why we've seen this spike of sleep paralysis because people are talking sure. about it more. It makes me, it makes me think, you know, we'll just go piggybacking off of what you said. It makes me think, um, do dif- do different, do demons target people of the ethnicity they're part of? So like, for instance, a Christian demon would go for someone who is, you know, Christian, rather, you know, someone who is uh, uh, Hindu, mm-hmm. um, and um, because it's the challenge, it's you identify with the religion that I'm a part of, and I'm going to conquer you. Well, so that's the thing with demons. A lot of them, um, a lot of their goal is to try to break your faith. Um, sure. Because anytime you're dealing with a malevolent spirit, it's oftentimes a matter of who has a stronger, uh, who has stronger conviction. Yes. And yes. so. You know, when a demon can overpower you in the way where you can't even scream, you can't talk, you can't move, yeah. it, it's able to get that energy from you. And I think that's why people are so scared of these creatures. Because, you know, um, when we were learning about the hag, when we were first writing it into the script, we went to Charleston and took a tour with a... Um, Alfonso Brown. Yeah, with Alfonso Brown, who is a Gullah King. Was he a gold yeah, king? Yeah, yeah. He he was an incredible uh, tour guide, and definitely take his tour. I, I think it's still going, still yeah. going strong in Charleston. From, in Charleston, so. so if you ever go to Charleston, you want to learn about the Gullah uh culture, definitely take Alfonso's uh, tour. But that's just a quick plug. Anyway, but yeah, can. so he basically was bringing on all these people that he knew who were Gullah, and um, he would ask them because he knew we were researching the hag. He's like, he was talking to them about different things. They were so friendly. They were, you know, super happy to answer any questions we had. But the second he asked, what do you know about hags? They all Yeah, they shut did not want to talk about it. They did not want to talk because they... they are they, so scared of it. They're so scared of it. And I feel like this is exactly what's happening with the Popo Bawa. So, is, interestingly enough, at the Popo Bawa, a man actually claimed that he was the Popo Bawa, and the mob killed him in Tanzania. What? Because they take it that seriously. Oh, my God. Yeah, they take it that seriously that it is that entrenched in their culture now where people are so scared oh of this no. creature that if you say that you're the Popo Bawa, you're, like, unalived. Okay, I am not the Popo Bawa. I am also not the Popo Bawa, but, you know... Um, I would like to visit uh, Zanzibar. Yeah. Um, and when I do, I just want everyone to know, our listeners from Zanzibar, I am not the Pope of Bawa. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it just shows. It's the same way. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the Gullah Geechee people are not out here um, killing people that are hags, but, you know. Yeah, wow. Um, but it, it just shows how far someone will go. From how scared they and, are, and with with uh, you know just comparing and contrasting the West West African hag to the East African uh, Popo Bawa, um, the hag was a person in your society. Yeah, that that's another thing. It, this isn't just like a creature that you know comes out like you know jeepers creepers every 20 years or whatever yeah like, this isn't just a creature this is a person that, that transforms that transforms into a hag at night um and so really really cool stuff y'all need to google it if you don't know about yeah. it or come see the show oh yeah. yeah um definitely look into the hag if you've never heard about it because it is fascinating um but <clears throat> it, there are stark similarities yeah to it there really and, are I wonder, too, you know, because we're getting the uh, Gullah perspective of the hag from, you know, post-slavery. But Uh I wonder, the the hag from its original roots 
in West Africa, I wonder if it wasn't something more similar, something a bit more gruesome, but isn't talked about now in Western culture. I, that's actually really, you know, good analysis, to be honest. Yeah, because... That's a, that's a good theory. I think, I think you're probably right. Obviously, I would feel like they're not going to talk about something that, you know, sexually assaults people. Yeah, um, it's a little, like when it's a little they, much. Yeah. So, but this this Papa Bawa is obviously affecting society. It's societies. affecting people. It's affecting people. Yeah, and it's so, and it's so recent Gosh. too that you know it is even creepier. The fact that the BBC even saw how much of an epidemic yeah. this was that they took time and wrote an article on it yeah. show, shows a lot. Yeah. The I just I'm I'm you know I'm just really really uh, wondering. I'm not, I'm not a naysayer. I'm just saying that, like, are we... I really wonder if we are sure it is not just a, a really, really bad guy. Well, why would people be reporting every time that they were sexually assaulted by the Pope of Bawa that it Because had they know that, about it. But, Jay, why would they not say that it was a serious... Like, I feel like if they're uh, stepping forward to tell someone that they were sexually assaulted by something, if it was a man, they would be saying, like, this man sexually assaulted me. Yeah. You know, if they are bold enough to actually come out and say sure. that that happened, why would they lie about who did it? You know yeah. what I mean? No, no. Um, I, because I it is very consistent with the fact that it has bat-like wings, it smells like sulfur, and it, um, you know. Yeah. It, it's all of those sort of things. People are very, very consistent with it. Sure. So yeah, absolutely. I feel like people aren't just making that sort of thing up. Because especially in a, I'm not sure of the political belief system in Tanzania, but I w would imagine it's probably pretty taboo to say that you were sexually assaulted by a cryptid of sorts. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's so not just that. I mean, I would think that's going to be like anywhere. Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's people just, think you're crazy. It's a, it's a really, really, it's yeah. Just, just basically ending that part. It is a really, really uh, aggressive story and um, um, cryptid. Like, yeah. it's a very, very aggressive cryptid. It's a very malevolent, mm -hmm. demonic mm -hmm. entity of sorts, if not cryptid. Um, encrypted and demons can, um, yeah, they, you know, can, intercept yeah. at times. So it's not entirely impossible that it is, you know, not sure. both. But I definitely think this is a demonic entity, especially because of the girl who in the 1970s was possessed by one, allegedly. Wow. Like... That tells me that's something demonic because a cryptic can't possess people per se. Now, was she exercised? Did it say? They didn't say. Oh, okay. It wasn't super well documented sure. um, because, you know, it was the 70s. And yeah. You know. um, but, yeah, it's – I think it's a very malevolent entity for sure. Um, I wouldn't want to encounter one. I know you wouldn't want to encounter one. And that's going to make my ranking a bit higher, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything else about? That's what I could find. Okay. Um, so, basically, that is the key of it. People think it's coming back. It, yeah, okay. And so, so, it does It does kind of like... It does uh, waves. It does, yeah, you said that. You, yeah. Um, and, and it's going to... People are like waiting for it to come back to come and start doing this again. There's no science to when it mm -hmm. uh, arrives. It's just no. absolutely at random. Well, it, it's like, 100% at random. Yeah, like I said, it's a fairly recent um, creature for folklore um, in Tanzania because it really started in the 70s, which is super interesting. Sure. Um, so I don't think it's it's not ancient enough for them to really tell, you know. Because it like it was in the seventies and eighties, it looked like it was like a ten year period where it was there, and then it went away, and then it came back in the nineties to sure. the early two thousands, and then in two thousand seven it sort of died off, but now it feels like it's coming back. It makes me wonder if this wasn't something created, like like when I think of the in hag. What way? Well, I'll tell you. When I think of the hag, I think of something that was created with some serious messed up uh you know you can't even call it magic like just real black stuff uh dark stuff um like black magic is what i mean um like uh it makes me wonder if you know this wasn't created by a very evil 
witch, um, e- very, very um, exiled person that was not a member, uh, not, not a participating member of society and wanted to hurt people and wanted to hurt the society because they were angry maybe with, you know, something about it or just it in general. And, and because, you know, when I, th- when I think of the hag, I think of I think of something that was you know it it, it can be put on people mm-hmm. from what from from what Alfonso Brown told us from what our research um, you know in Charleston and on the internet and all that stuff uh, you know what it told us is that the hag can be cast upon someone yeah. Um, to uh, to be ridden and they won't be able to get rid of it and eventually you know it how drives it drives them into it, insanity it drives basically. them into insanity because they can't sleep they're just constantly having sleep paralysis and it's like it's just like the worst type of insomnia so that makes me that makes me wonder if if you know this wasn't something because of how recent it was something that was created um, to hurt so, society okay well. It's there, not there's a, there, okay, so there's a few things that I agree with you, and there's a few things I disagree. So the fact of the matter is I don't care how powerful of a witch or a wizard or warlock or whatever you want to consider yourself. Um, I don't care how powerful you are. You can't conjure an entity in that way. You can't create we as humans do not have that power to create an entity that malevolent we can invoke things we can you know um call yeah. upon things Th- okay so like in the sense of the hag that's essentially what they're doing is they're invoking the spirit of a hag and they're putting it upon someone got it but we can't just like form something out of nothing like as humans that's just sure. not a thing that happens but I will say that um, I do agree with you that maybe it was somebody in, who was an outcast in the way of like a Yama Uba, how Yama Ubas are yep, considered yep, yep. that they're made. Um, you know, if you haven't listened to that episode, definitely check that out. Is yep. that a Patreon exclusive? Or um, it's, that- it's definitely on uh, Patreon, uh, but it wasn't in it. Was that one exclusive? I don't know. We 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 do we do um, a lot of from one to wicked uh, Patreon exclusive. We have a couple up there, um, so I I don't remember. Well, regardless, yeah. I'll just briefly explain what a Yama Uba is. And but Yama Ubas were um, women who were oftentimes exiled in times of poverty, where they were sent out into the woods um, because in Japan. in Japan because their families were not financially able to support enough of the people so sometimes they sent out young women and sometimes they sent out elderly women and um they would become these yama ubas um but you know it makes me wonder that maybe uh it's a similar kind of situation where maybe somebody was outcast into sure. out of society and they became this popabawa but in my opinion it's less likely because even with yama ubas they're not evil enough where they're causing only malicious harm. Yeah, but, you know, have you noticed, Madison, throughout this entire episode, and I'm sure the listeners have noticed, too, they're like, ah, are they talking about the Papa Bawa, or are they talking about every other cryptid, you know, in the world? Yeah. Because it's like, it's like we have mentioned Bad Boy, we've mentioned the Hag, we've mentioned Yama Uba now, uh, we might have mentioned another one, I don't know, but, like, We've mentioned a bunch. Is this is it is it weird to you that that well, this thing is kind of made up by well, okay. a bunch of different well, things? There's a lot of similarities with a lot of different things. You know, I guess. we can draw comparisons to things to make it make sense. Yeah, but we've just never we've never talked so much about the different cryptids well, out the there to make re- up one. Well, cryptid. the Bat Boy really that's just like in a sense of like kind of how it looks to picture it. In my opinion, the biggest comparison would be the Bad. Hag. And the Popobawa, those are the two that are the most I completely agree. The only reason why I bring up Yama Uba is with that theory that we're talking about, that would make the most sense with it. Um, I don't think that it's a creature consistent of all these different cryptids. My opinion. So, basically, we've talked about how humans can sometimes become malevolent spirits when they lose all humanity. Okay. But it is very rare for that to happen. Usually, 
when a creature is this malevolent, that was something that has never been alive, that is sole purpose is to cause harm and mayhem on this plane, sure. essentially. And I think that it is a demon of sorts from the Tanzanian belief system okay. that causes this harm on those types. I'm going to give, I'm, I, I'm going to agree with you on the fact that, that maybe it wasn't created. However, I, I agree that it was called upon by somebody. Been. I think this is somebody's doing this doesn't this type of thing just doesn't happen to a society for no reason i mean uh, you know just like every other society this is a this is a group of you know 98 percent good hard-working people and then you have the two percent that are you know evil i mean it's just it literally sure. our city every every city in my in my opinion is like that you just never get a perfect place and and so it i think this was just something created by that two percent i mean like you mean um invoked by the two invoked sorry okay. sorry invoked like yeah. something called upon by you know someone that that was exiled so yeah i mean it's totally possible i mean anytime we're talking about a demonic force or malevolent force like that we really can only speculate especially because there obviously is no documented source of like this is when it started or this is the situation that triggered this we can only speculate um and considering that you know i'm just going off of what typically happens when you get sure a demonic yeah. entity it, that that's the basis I can the only basis I can really go off of, but it is quite possible that so you some, believe it's a demon. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I believe that because it, of the, mainly because of the smell. No, 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 no. That is just one factor of it. I think it's because it can, um, for one, change its form, but also for two, you know, uh, the fact that it possessed somebody. That okay. is a big trigger for me um, for a demonic entity because malevolent spirits typically cannot possess someone um that takes something that is seeking human form mm -hmm. and that tells me that was something that was never alive sure if it's possessing someone also just the heinous nature of its attacks tells me that is something that would that its sole purpose is just to be yeah a, a menace on society um and yeah. that is typically the purpose of a lot of demons sure. is um that is their job you know, is just yeah. to cause havoc. So a man hating demon. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I wonder if the person who called upon this particular thing, I wonder if this person, no matter who they were, were just, I mean, I, I they must hate men, yeah. but I wonder if like men, some men have done them wrong. And so now sure. it's like all, the entire sex is going to pay Suffer. for it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's totally possible. I mean, we're just speculating because... We're totally just speculating. I mean, that's what we do on this podcast. Yeah, we because... We're just like, like, could it be this? Yeah. And if we have any Tanzanians that are very familiar with this... as Or we, have uh, any kind of clue of yeah. where it started. At the, um, at the end of, like, every uh, From One to Wicked... Um, you know, uh, 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 the podcast that we do, um, we would love to hear from you, uh, you know, DM us and we will definitely talk about it on the next one, the beginning of the next yeah. one, because, you know, uh, there's only so much resource on, we can get. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Not being there. Yeah. So. I mean, they're like where I get my resources a lot of times is from papers. People write about these creatures because yeah. there's a I lot, mean, the best there's a lot of folklorists out there who really study specific creatures sure. and so um you know a lot of people like to go into especially with this particular entity they like to go into the scientific nature of sleep paralysis but it doesn't negate the fact that it's such a consistent story of Absolutely. people seeing this creature and it's such a worldwide sensation of sorts where you know people are experiencing sleep paralysis but their entities change depending yeah. on who they are so i feel like in you know, that sure. can make sense for me as it being a demon. I think it is time to rate this. Yes. And um, I'll, do you want me to go first? I'll yeah, go first. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so it's going to be high. Yes. Personally, I think that this is a, um, I think that this is a uh, 
very, very, very malevolent thing. I think that, you know, a, a big, when I'm, when I'm considering uh, my ratings, I always consider, is it still haunting? You know, uh, if it did haunt and it was bad, I will definitely give it a, uh, you know, I'll give it a, a high rating. But if it's still haunting, it's going to get like a Bloody McKenzie rating, mm -hmm. you know, of a nine. So therefore, I think that, um, I think that because it comes in waves, it does die down. You know, I take that into consideration. That lowers it just a tad. But then with the physicality and brutality of the attacks, um, you know, those are things obviously that um, torture people for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's, that's pretty awful. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5. Um, and that's a really, really high, score. high A point. I'm not doing like 8.75 because like, you know, there's no reason yeah, to be doing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking 8.5 and like on the cusp of 9. Um, yeah. because it's a, it, 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 it's, it's a, it's a bad, bad thing. It's been documented, um, pretty well from what I can tell. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's just, um, it's, it's awful. Yeah. I was definitely going to give it an eight. Um, okay. like a very, very solid eight, almost 8.5. Okay. Um, because of the heinous nature of the attacks, um, because Personally, that's one of the few entities that I've heard of in my life that sexually attacks a mm -hmm. person, which is kind of unheard of in a lot of ways. Um, because typically, you know, sexual relationships don't happen between humans and things on the other side. Sure, sure, sure. That's just like a big no-go, no, not happening. Absolutely. So that's very shocking to me, but also just the impact that it made on that society it shows me how malevolent yep. it is. The fact that there are whole families sleeping outside because they're so scared to have their husbands, their brothers, their uncles, you know, sleeping in the house because That's they're wild. terrified of this creature, you know. That's wild. That makes that a very malevolent spirit. Now, the reason why it's an eight and not a nine for me is because it has not killed anyone. Oh, yeah, I guess... I guess so. Yes, it has not killed anyone, oh. but it's almost like it's almost something worse, in my opinion, uh, because yes, it is horrible to take someone's life as an entity, but you're leaving them with the trauma of the action. That's what I'm all about. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I mean. You you might as well be killing them. Exactly. You know, in a lot of cases. Yeah, and the fact too that it threatens them oftentimes yeah. that if they don't tell people what it's happened that it's going to keep doing Ooh. it to them um which that's you know very also intelligent haunting. it is well and that's why i say it's a malevolent entity because of the fact that because a lot of times when you speak about an entity you're giving it power yeah you know and so it wants that it does it wants because that one fear is like the best fuel for a, a spirit anyways because it is such an intense palpable emotion that we emit as human beings sure it's already supercharging them but then on top of it when we give them power by using their name because names are so powerful in folklore in the paranormal yeah. you know it knows what it's doing it, it has does. a game plan so it does solid eight for me Okay. I mean, I think that's, I think that's a, and we, know. we don't give eights and nines out lightly. No. So, you no, know. I think, I think the, I think I'm trying to remember if there's anything other than bloody McKenzie no. that has been this high. No, everything else has been like a seven max. Seven max. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, uh, you know, we've, we've really been all over the board with, with these, uh, you know, from Amityville getting a zero, um, to, to, you know, bloody McKenzie getting a nine. Now this is an 8.5. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, I think we're accurate here. I think we're accurate I think here. We this are thing too. is not anything to be messed with. No. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty freaking awful. Yeah. Um, and if <laughs> your family really has ever experienced uh, Popobawa, please let us know because yeah, I'm oh my very gosh. interested Absolutely. to hear someone's firsthand account that's not through like articles and stuff. Yes. So, yes. And, you know, um, you know, same thing with like if you've experienced a, a hag, you know, let us know um, because we'd love to do we'd love to do an episode where we, you know, where we kind of like uh, zoom someone in mm -hmm. uh, like like how we did with Emma um, uh, from Real Life Hauntings podcast. Um, 
So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, and same goes for any uh, culture. Sorry, real life ghost stories podcast. Yes. I'm crazy. Um, but, yeah, same thing for any kind of culture uh, that your family or you might be from. Please send us your ghost stories or your local legends that we might not know about. Absolutely. Because it, I'm interested to talk about you guys's spirits and hauntings and stuff like that because a lot of times when I'm researching for this uh, particular segment and whatnot I'm looking at things I find personally interesting Um, but you know and I know you guys are enjoying it as well but I do like to hear things that are personal to you guys Um, and you guys might know about something that I'm not aware of because obviously I've not been everywhere in the world. So, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. And to our patrons, um, if you want us to talk about a particular haunting around the world uh, from uh, on a uh, from one to wicked mm-hmm. um, version of this podcast, uh, you know. Let us let know. It, yeah, let us know. Um, also, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly plug uh, Real Life Ghost Stories uh, with Emma. Her podcast is like amazing. It wins so many awards and it's like, it's killer. Emma's just awesome yeah um we just did uh, uh i think it was like not last saturday but the saturday before we dropped a um we dropped an episode uh collaborating with her and she's just the best i mean she's awesome it was a great episode she was amazing and then we also did an episode for her podcast so go check that out mm-hmm. um she's been doing it for way longer than us and just absolutely destroys it she has so much content for you guys to just go yeah. she also has a patreon um so go check that out um but we are going to be doing more collaboration podcasts with her guaranteed because of just how seamless that went and how great she is. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, I could brag about her all day. Like our, our experience with her was just phenomenal. Incredible. The, um, but yeah, so if you guys have any recommendations of things you want to hear from us um, or even, you know, topics you want to hear with us when we talk. Join our Patreon. Um, with, yeah, uh, when we talk with Chris or if you have questions, join our Patreon. Yes. Um, but yeah. Become a para junkie. Become a para junkie. Um, but yes, so if you don't already follow us on TikTok, definitely go check us out at the Savannah Underground. Our Patreon is patreon.com slash Savannah Underground if we have convinced you to cross over to the other side. Uh, but with that, my name is Madison Timmons. And I'm JT Timmons. And stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>